A report released yesterday by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare titled Australia's Welfare 2019 shows the key trends in Australia's social support, housing, education and employment. Australia spends about 10.9% of its GDP on welfare, putting it below the OECD median. Finland and other European countries spend much more on welfare than do countries like the UK, Australia, the United States and Canada. Unemployment in Australia has stayed relatively stable, hovering around the 5-6% to mark over the last decade. It's currently sitting at 5.2%. Remember, however, that employment is defined as having only worked one hour a week or more, so you could be earning as little as $19.49 a week and still be classified as employed. And to be considered unemployed, you must be actively looking for work. So if you've given up looking for work, guess what? You're not unemployed. The rate of long-term unemployment has increased from 15% in 2009 to 25% in 2018. So one in four unemployed people have been looking for work for more than a year without success. That is, they can't even find one hour of work per week. However, if we look at underemployment, we can see that the rates are significantly higher and have been steadily trending upwards over the last decade. If you combine both unemployment and underemployment, we have almost 14% of the Australian labour force not being able to find enough work, remembering that people who have given up looking for work don't count. The number of people in part-time employment has risen from 28% in 2008 to 31% in 2018. The number of people in apprenticeships is falling from about 336,000 in 2014 to 267,000 last year. The rate of females participating in apprenticeships is also falling. The rate of old people on the disability support pension or carer payment has increased rather dramatically from 0.2% in 2001 to 3% in 2018. Taking into account inflation, the government is actually spending a lot more on welfare per person than it once did. Consequently, the number of people working in welfare has also been steadily increasing. When it comes to home ownership, young people are losing out. The rate of home ownership for 25 to 29 year olds has plummeted from 50% in 1971 to 37%. For 30 to 34 year olds, it's fallen from 64% to 50%. Unsurprisingly, the number of people renting has increased for all age categories, with more and more people renting for life. The proportion of households spending more than half their income on housing is growing, while the proportion of people spending less than 25% is shrinking. Simply existing in Australia is becoming increasingly more expensive. Due to rising underemployment and a lack of affordable housing, Australia is also facing a loneliness epidemic. One in four Australians are currently lonely, with one in two Australians being lonely at least one day a week. Loneliness has been linked to premature death, poor physical and mental health, and general dissatisfaction with life. Four in five people entering prison are male, two in five are indigenous, two-thirds are under 40, three-quarters have been to prison before, and half are unemployed. Unemployment leads to crime, and vice versa. Despite the rising underemployment issue, it turns out overemployment has also become an issue and may just be the reason why wages have stagnated. The wage price index experienced record lows before rising barely above rising living costs. The Australia Institute conducted research that shows Australians are owed about $106 billion in overtime. The average worker puts in six hours of unpaid overtime per week, which equates to working an extra two months for free every year, and this trend is increasing. Workplace expert Conrad Leveris had these words to say, It's basically two different sides of the stress coin. There's people who are desperate for more hours at work, and there are people who are struggling to even keep a semblance of a life. You're either running around stressed about paying your bills, or you're losing your relationships with people around you, and the only life you have is that of work. Both of them are incredibly sad and frustrated, and you know they're basically linked. Professor John Buchanan at the University of Sydney Business School spoke of the ongoing work hours issue in Australia. He said, People are starting to wake up. We do have a serious working time problem. We work amongst the longest hours, we've got amongst the highest proportion of part-time workers, and amongst many of those part-timers, they want to work more hours. Hours of work started to get out of control in the 1980s, and it's been locked in now in enterprise agreements and weekly regulated parts of the labour market. You now have many workers not having enough hours, and those who do have work, full-timers, working amongst the longest hours in the world. Secretary of the Australian Council of Trade Unions Sally McManus spoke of the rising issue of wage theft. 
She said, if you feel as though you can't say no to your employer and you have to work those extra hours, often unpaid, so it's really a form of wage theft or job theft, you're going to work those extra hours in order to keep your job, and that's a problem. It's not their fault as individuals. They're in a position where often they're put under pressure to work those extra hours for free. And so employers, if they think they can get people who will work all those hours for free, why would they employ someone they have to pay? What are your thoughts? Is Australia facing an underemployment and an overemployment crisis simultaneously? What can be done about it? Are employers getting away with too much, or are they under pressure as well to compete in this increasingly globalised world?